Council. Would the clerk please read the quote for this evening? I don't think so. Yes, yeah. Okay, I don't think so. <clears throat> I've learned that people may forget what you said, people may forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. Thank you very much. Please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The next item on the agenda is approval of our, the minutes from our uh, meeting on uh, October 17th. Alderperson Donahue. Thank you, Mayor. I move to approve. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the minutes? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. <coughs> next, we'll move on to resignations. City Attorney. First resignation is from uh, Pete Streisick, who is resigning from the Board of Appeals, the Architectural Review uh, Board, and the Contractors Examining Board. The other resignation is uh, from Jake Toman, who is resigning from the Business Improvement District Board. Thank you very much. Alderperson Donahue. Um, thank you. I move to uh, uh, accept and file. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Next move on to mayor's appointments. City attorney. Uh, first, uh, submitting the following appointment for your consideration. Paul Rudnick to be considered uh, for appointment to the uh, Sheboygan Squared Bid Board to fill the unexpired term of Jake Toman, whose term expires on December 31, 2016. Second, submitting the following appointment for your consideration, uh, Michael Vandersteen and Chad Pelishek to be considered for appointment to the Sheboygan Area Tourism Commission for the term January 1, 2017 to 12-31-17. And third, submitting the following appointment for your consideration, Alec Bartoli to be considered for appointment to the Sustainable Sheboygan Task Force whose term expires on April 23rd, 2017. It says 16, but I'm sure it means 17. Thank you, and those will lie over until the uh, next meeting. There's no other uh, appointments to be confirmed at this meeting. Uh, next, we'll move on to a presentation of the community survey that was done recently by City Administrator Daryl Hoffland. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, included in your uh, packet for this week uh, the Alders received a narrative summary of the 2016 uh, community questionnaire. Uh, tonight, uh, I put together a PowerPoint presentation um, so that uh, you can maybe understand some of the fine points of the survey and ultimately for, for the uh, folks that are seeing this uh, over, over cable or uh, on, on demand. Again, the purpose for the community survey was to gain an understanding of the views and preferences of the citizens Survey was completed using uh, SurveyMonkey, an online survey instrument. Of the citizens who are 18 or older, uh, we received a response of 717, or roughly 2%. Assuming randomness, uh, the responses equate to 95% certainty with a 4% plus or minus error, a margin of error. For an outreach plan for the community survey, again, this is the first survey done uh, in many years community message boards, our cable studio, city websites, social media, Shoreland Metro buses, uh, private billboards, local newspaper articles, local radio station promotion. Uh, public library had uh, paper copies in case residents uh, did not have access to the internet. And then a booth at the Hmong uh, Festival at Kiwanis Park. If I could summarize the typical 2016 community survey respondent, it was a female, it was a homeowner, it was someone who had lived in the city of Sheboygan for 25 plus years. I think good news for all of us, 74% of the survey participants indicated that their quality of life in Sheboygan was either good or excellent. As far as the direction of the city, 57% identified that it was improving or holding steady.
When asked what was the best thing about living in Sheboygan, uh, Lake Michigan was identified by 43%, a wide margin. SurveyMonkey has what's called a, a response cloud. And so this one, uh, we're visually showing some of the keywords that were used and some of the responses. But when asked, the one thing that was of most concern to, uh, to the uh, survey takers or participants, the top three responses were 25% uh, identified drugs, 24% identified crime, and 9% identified streets, street-related matters. Regarding the city's performance, overall performance, either good or excellent, 62% responded with either of those two answers. Other performance-related uh, questions, uh, managing taxpayer dollars, again, as you can see on the, uh, the bar charts, uh, somewhere between fair and good on keeping its citizens informed, uh, pretty close to good on average, delivering services efficiently. Uh, again, good would be the average uh, response. And then focusing on priorities uh, between fair and good was the average answer. Another city performance related issue was name the top five important city services, police services, number one, and then the rest of the top five, street maintenance, paving, fire services, snow plowing and ice control, and emergency medical services. In regards to the top city services, the top five were fire services, EMS, police services, library services, and finally, quality of water. In rating the top five city departments, Mead Library came out number one, then the fire department, police department, number four was water utility, and five coming in was senior activity center. A question was included in the survey in regards to how satisfied are you with your shopping options? Uh, unfortunately, 40, uh, only 40% identified very satisfied or satisfied, 60% identified dissatisfied or, ve or very dissatisfied. Personal safety was another category that was discussed. 92% of the survey participants responded that they felt very safe or safe in their neighborhoods uh, during the day. 59% responded they felt very safe or safe in their neighborhoods after dark. When asked uh, for their reasons of concern uh, after dark, uh, drugs, crime, and streets uh, were the top three uh, common uh, words that were included in there in their in this open-ended uh, question Infrastructure How satisfied are they with their neighborhood streets sidewalks or landscaping? 54% responded very satisfied or somewhat satisfied Communication We asked what are the top five ways in which you receive information about the city of Sheboygan? Number one was Sheboygan Press, 76%. Next was the website, 66. Sheboygan Sun, 46. WHBL Radio, 43. And the social media next door, uh, 30%. Based upon the survey responses, the top five reasons residents chose Sheboygan as a place to live. Number one was they're native of Sheboygan or family and friends are, are here. Near employment, number three was low crime rate, four was the cost of housing or their apartment, and five is proximity to Lake Michigan. We had a couple more questions. Um, the next one is funding sources for services. Um, how best to raise uh, funds associated with rising costs in the city, and the number one uh, response was use a combination of increased property taxes and user fees that came in at number that came in at 41 percent the second highest response was increased user fees and charges but do not increase property taxes the third highest response was increased property taxes do not increase user fees and the last option uh, or lowest response given was to actually to cut services we had an open-ended question asking people to share uh, anything with, with us. 
Uh, again, this is uh, one of those survey clouds. Uh, the larger the font, uh, the more often that word was used. Uh, if you can sort of see it, parks, taxes, streets, and roads um, uh, were, were the largest. Again, if anyone wants to uh, see those results, uh, contact Chad's office uh, if, if you want more details. Again, the survey, if you recall, uh, was done in July. Uh, in August, uh, you participated in a retreat along with the management team. Uh, this survey information was provided uh, prior to um, uh, that retreat. The results of the retreat uh, as staff has been working hard on developing some of the concepts uh, identified, if you recall, we had little stickers, um, and, the, and the most frequently um, identified uh, areas or issues, uh, they will be discussed uh, within the next month. Uh, and again, uh, you'll be back along with the management team. Uh, citizens will be invited to uh, attend as well. And so we look forward to a, a committee of the whole, possibly the second Monday in the month of December. Uh, for the survey itself, in order to maybe entice some folks to, to participate, we offered a $100 gift certificate, a chamber cash gift certificate. Uh, Lisa Welton uh, was, the, was the lucky winner. Um, Mayor Vandersteen had a chance to meet her. She uh, identified that she's gonna be donating the $100 to a local food pantry, so very, very fitting. So congratulations, Lisa. Uh, with that, it concludes uh, my PowerPoint slides. Uh, any questions or comments? Yes. One person, Trester. Can you tell me from the amount of people in that entered the sur or used the survey in comparison to the population of Sequoia? Uh, you know, we're close to 50,000, of which I identified roughly 39. I'm sorry, 38,500 are 18 or older. That's what our audience was geared toward. Again, uh, we received 717. So a low response. The hope is that in the future uh, it will continue to build, but the first, first time around was low. Alder person Schneider. Anyone else? Thank you very much. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is the public forum. All right. Uh, first on our list this evening is Dane Schaefer. Dane, are you here? And Dane, if you could give me your home address, please. Uh, yes, it's 3728 South 13th Street. Thank you. And you will have five minutes. All right. Thank you. Hello, my name is Dane Schaefer. Um, I'm here today to talk, sorry, here today to talk to you guys about the proposed ordinance regarding paraphernalia in Sheboygan. I'm the owner of the Epicure Lounge, the hookah bar on Michigan Avenue. I've been assured that my business will be safe in <coughs> regards to this law. However, I still have some concerns about this ordinance and its language in general that I'm hoping to have cleared up before it is adopted. This ordinance has uh, been presented to myself and the public as, moving, as a moving of the language from the Wisconsin state statutes to Sheboygan's books. I've read both the state law as well as the proposed ordinance side by side, and while they are in fact similar, there have been changes made and omissions in the language. I brought a copy of both the Wisconsin statutes and the proposed ordinance um, with changes between them highlighted. I'd read them for you, but I really don't want to put you guys to sleep. I'd rather you hear what I have to say. Um, so uh, I'll start here with uh, Alderperson Herman, and if you guys want to take a look and pass them around. Uh, one change that I will point out directly is that uh, in the Wisconsin statutes, there's an exemption for and this is now a quote, uh, any items including pipes, papers, and accessories that are designed for the use or primarily intended for use with tobacco products. Um, as far as I can tell, that language is completely omitted from, uh, from the proposed ordinance. 
Um, I've asked for clarification about these changes and have only been told that the law will not affect my business and that we are just moving the language from the uh, state to the city. But I've never had the changes acknowledged nor have I had my concerns about them addressed. Uh, we've been told this change is being made to clarify the law and make it uh, easier to follow. I understand the desire to clarify laws. Um, however, it seems that state laws being adopted by Sheboygan uh, seems to be common practice. In fact, with a quick search of our ordinances here in Sheboygan, I found at least 13 other places where we straight up adopt a Wisconsin statute regarding uh, a specific subject. Uh, why then have we decided to start to put everything in one place now and why with this law specifically? Why even go through all of this trouble for something that we've been told won't really have an effect at all? Um, the, the ordinance has also been presented as something that will not affect policing. Since the language is the same as what we are currently governed by and it's just being relocated. However, I have had conversations with other local business owners that claim their businesses have been visited recently by officers who have told them that once this ordinance passes, they will be issuing citations for the glass pipes that uh, these places were selling. If the law changes and nothing, uh, if the law changes nothing and policing will be the same, why does it seem that our local law enforcement thinks otherwise? I'm here today to simply seek clarification. I'm asking that the city be open and transparent with its citizens. The way that this ordinance has been presented and what seems to be the case do not line up. If our goal is to mirror the language from the state, then the language should be the exact same, yet it isn't. If on the other hand, the language changes are necessary to serve a, pur a purpose, I'm simply asking what that purpose is. Why has the language changed? If you know the answer to this simple question, please share it with the public so that we may be more clear on what is being accomplished with this ordinance. If, however, like me, you're unsure why these changes were necessary because it has been presented to you as a copy and paste from the Wisconsin law, it should go without saying that this ordinance cannot be passed in its current state without first addressing the reason for the language changes. Thank you very much for your time and I hope you can uh, help me clarify the purpose of the ordinance and the changes in the language. Thank you, Dean. Thanks. Next on the list is Toby Watson. And Toby, can I have your home address, please? Sure. It's 403 Lakewood Court in Kohler, Wisconsin. You will have five minutes. Hi. Um, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Dr. Toby Watson. I've been uh, in business here in Sheboygan, specifically down here on A Street for the past 20, uh, about 25 years now. Um, I occupy about 17 of the storefronts on downtown A Street. Um, we have numerous properties you know, throughout that we've worked with the city on successfully. Um, the last gentleman that just uh, came up and asked the question, why is this being proposed? And the proposal, as discussed at certain meetings and within certain crowds, was because they wanted to combine ordinances and keep them into one place. If that was the case, um, I would be maybe supportive of that, combining the ordinances and keeping them together. I think that makes a lot of sense. Other reasons why we often put ordinances here in the city is to have tax dollars stay here locally in Sheboygan. Um, sometimes we do that to help the court system, the circuit court, if they're overburdened with court and we want to use our municipal court, we can do that as well. Um, certain communities have decriminalized uh, marijuana usage and they've adopted similar ordinances to what we have, which would be another purpose um, to keep it again more local. However, this ordinance was not presented and proposed for any of those reasons. This ordinance was proposed for one reason and one reason only when one of my tenants wanted to come into the downtown area, a phone call was made once city development realized that this tenant was going to operate a legal business, but a business where certain products could be used for illegal purposes. And it was for that reason that a call was made to one of the aldermen to propose this ordinance and to say we need to have this ordinance. That is why we're concerned, because we're hearing a different story now that we're just combining laws or ordinances together. 
If that was the case, we wouldn't be so concerned and you wouldn't have shop owners coming. But when a shop owner then sees that the proposed ordinance has omissions and different language, but is being told it's the same, we get concerned because we know that in other communities they adopted similar ordinances in order to do selective policing where they had some vague laws, which is the statute in Wisconsin, it's very vague on what constitutes drug paraphernalia and how they interpret that law. I don't believe that we should adopt an ordinance that already is based on Wisconsin law that is vague. If there's concerns about that Wisconsin statute, I think we should address those at the state level first, get those clarified, and then maybe adopt an ordinance that makes much more reasonable sense. My concern is that if we adopt this ordinance in its form with the omissions that have been omitted from the actual state statute, it could open up Pandora's box where we will have selective policing where they make a educated guess of what they think drug paraphernalia might be or might not be. Certain shop owners may be allowed to sell certain items where other shops won't be able to. Hudson, Wisconsin did something very similar and they ended up having cases there. It cost their community over $50,000 according to the attorney that was involved in that case. I'd hate to see my tax dollars, which I'm paying a lot of for a lot of these downtown businesses and, and property, used to deter business from coming to downtown. The shop's are already open, they've been operating, they haven't had any police uh, uh, involvement, they haven't had anybody come down there to even look at their store yet. But the concern that at least a lot of shop owners have that sell similar products, and people that are libertarians like myself, is that we are adopting an ordinance which could be used to criminalize or at least cite people who are selling a legal product and they're going to be um, told that they're selling an illegal product, even though they don't really know what a customer may or may not do in the future. I appreciate the time. Thank you. Thank you, Toby. And last on our list is Tammy Wood. Tammy, if you want to come on up. And Tammy, could you give us your home address, please? It's W10880 Creechie Road in Elroy, Wisconsin. Okay, and you will have five minutes. Good evening. Thank you for the opportunity for me to stand here and strongly urge you not to adopt this ordinance. The, I am a smoke shop owner from Reedsburg, Wisconsin, and Baraboo, Wisconsin just recently attempted to enact this ordinance. And when they did, I did a lot of research. I, as Dr. Watson, um, looked into the Hudson case when they enacted the, the same ordinance, it's verbatim, the same <laughs> ordinance that they enacted in Hudson, the day after they enacted it, they raided that smoke shop, and then a month after that, they raided another smoke shop. This did cost the city money. Now, during the municipal court hearings, the, the both smoke shops were found guilty. However, in circuit court, all these cases were dismissed. This cost hundreds of thousands of dollars for the city of Hudson. In Manitowoc, Wisconsin, this ordinance, this same ordinance was adopted, this redraft, and the next day, they went into the smoke shops, these businesses that donate to your communities. They employ people. They are vital. And they're here because there's also your citizens are shopping there. They patronize these businesses. And the, within 30 days, the smoke shop in Manitowoc has to get rid of all of its inventory. You're closing legitimate businesses for an unnecessary change. What we have right now, the Wisconsin State Law says that if these pipes are used criminally, then then they're against the law. But what this is doing is this is turning rebuttable presumption on its head, and it's requiring that the citizens now have to pre have to provide proof that they're innocent instead of the burden being on the officer having to provide proof that this is being used for illegal purposes. What you're doing is you're preemptively deciding that the citizens of your st that your city have intent to commit crimes, and that's just not the case. These pieces, these pieces of art, are first of all protected underneath the U.S. patents. They're, you're not going to grant a United States patent to something that is illegal. 
they are pieces of art that people collect. And the way these ordinances read is it kind of arbitrarily gives the police um, leeway to decide whether you're breaking the law or you're not. And you know, some of the examples that is used is past drug possession. How far away is that? Is it a 20 year past drug possession? Because in Wisconsin, second offense cannabis possession is a felony regardless if it was 20 years prior. So if someone 20 years ago had a possession and has a clean pipe that they can use for a plethora of legal herbal smoking uh, blends, then they're guilty. You, what you're doing is you're criminalizing citizens before that they've committed any law. You're putting the taxpayer citizens um, on notice that they're going to have to litigate these things because as a law-abiding citizen, when I'm fined for something that I haven't broken the law for, I'm going to take that to court. And in fact, many of the smoke shops that have found these uh, ordinances coming in have spoke with the ACLU. You don't want an ordinance that isn't necessary taking the city of Sheboygan and putting its name <coughs> on a Supreme Court ruling. You, this, is, this is a violation of citizens' rights. It is unnecessary, and I ask you respectfully not to enact this redraft. Thank you. Thank you, Tammy. That's it. Thank you very much. Next item is uh, Mayor's Announcements. Tonight I have the pleasure of recognizing one of our local businesses that's been in operation for 125 years. I'd like to ask Matt Quashis and Steve Woods to come on the front, please. The Office of the Mayor of City of Sheboygan Proclamation. Whereas the Quashis Construction Company was formed in 1891 by Patriarch George Quashis, and whereas the genesis of the business was founded upon residential services through the building of many of Sheboygan's quality homes of the era, and whereas over the years George refocused the business, building upon the company's vast experience with commercial and industrial construction services, and whereas in the 1930s, George Quashis's sons, Arthur, Raymond and Leslie joined the firm, which was renamed Quashis and Sons, and initiated the construction of light commercial and industrial buildings. And whereas later as the Quashis brothers, the, the company uh, broadened into a regional construction company responding to the challenges of the retail market. Quashis constructed 40 retail stores for the H.C. Prangy Company over a three-state sta area, as well as completing extensive renovation of the American Club. And whereas the third generation took the reins as Raymond Quashis Jr. and David Quashis headed the company, under the leadership of David, the company was renamed Quashis Construction Incorporated. And whereas the success of Quashis Construction building relationships since 1891 is what has poised current President Matt Quashis and his talented team uh, towards the future. I now therefore, Mike Vandersteen, as mayor of the city of Sheboygan, to hereby proclaim that the city of Sheboygan expresses its best wishes to Quashis Construction Incorporated on the occasion of its 125th anniversary. And we also look forward to uh, Matt's current project of uh, remodeling and restoring the old Keekly uh, uh, furniture store on A Street into their new corporate offices. Matt, happy to present this to you. Thank you very much. Would you like to say a few words? I'd be happy to. When you asked me to speak about each year in our company history, I was kind of <laughs> surprised, and I thought I'd maybe shrink that down a little bit. Uh, again, thank you very much. It, it's really a privilege to be part of a 125-year legacy in a family business. Um, when I first came back to Sheboygan in 2003, uh, one of the things, that, interesting things I learned about Quash's construction was our, our general contractor's license number was number six. I had to take the general contractor's exam and I got 2018 was my number. So a couple of things have changed since then. Uh, our first shop actually was on 15th Street, just north of Superior. And that shop housed a horse named Daisy and a foot-powered saw on the second floor with no running water and no electricity. So we've come a long way since that. and. In 125 years, our move down to 8th Street, the old Keekley building, will actually be only our third office. 
over that whole time. So it's, um, it's really a privilege to be part of this history. Steve's been with me, well, with, with the company for 31 years and me for 13 since I've been back in Sheboygan. And uh, we just want to say thank you very much uh, for everything the city's doing to encourage development. We're excited to be part of it, moving downtown, and look forward to uh, lots more exciting things to come. So thank you again. And I'd also like to thank Matt for stepping up and serving as a member of our Sheboygan Redevelopment Authority. Um, if you may have noticed, Chad sent out a lot of emails recently about the Levitt Amp Concert Program. Uh, the John Michael Kohler Arts Center is again applying for a Levitt Amp grant so we can continue our Thursday night concerts in downtown Sheboygan. So please go online and vote for us as many times as you can. I think it's limited to email addresses. So if you have more than one email address, feel free. Um, very day, important day is coming up tomorrow, our election day. Our city clerk has worked very hard with her staff and all the volunteers to prepare for this. Um, so please, uh, everybody, get out there and vote. We appreciate those that came in early and early voted to reduce some of the lines at the polls. And just so everybody remembers, you have to bring an ID card with a photo ID. They need that in order to vote. And I also uh, left a few copies of the um, articles that were written for the Sheboygan Press on your desk. And also, uh, I was pleased to write a budget support letter for the budget that Administrator Daryl Hofflin put together, and it'll be on the agenda for you to vote on tonight. The next item on the agenda is a hearing. Item 2.1 is a hearing on the vacation and discontinuance of a portion of a paved alley between Sibley Court on the north, Salmon Avenue on the south, Calumet Drive on the east, and Wyman on the west. Is there anyone who wishes to be heard? Is there anyone who wishes to be heard? Is there anyone who wishes to be heard? Alderperson Donahue? Uh, I would move to close the hearing. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Um, and all those in favor of closing the hearing, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Next, we'll move on to consent agenda. That'll include items 3.2 through 3.31. Alderperson Donahue. Thank you, Mayor. I move to accept and file all reports of officers, accept and adopt all reports of committees, and pass all resolutions and ordinances. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on any of the items in the consent agenda? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage? Fifteen eyes. Motion passes. Item four is reports of officers. Items 4.1 through 4.3 will be referred to various committees. Next section. I had a question. Sure. Oh, uh, Alderperson Bellinger. Thank you. Uh, I've just got a question, Mayor, on 4.1. Should that not be going to public protection and safety rather than public works? Just wondering why it's going to public works. Yes, that sounds fine. We'll make that adjustment. Thank you. Okay, so number 4.1 will go to public protection and safety. Um, all the person drawn? That's fine, Mayor. I just was going to make a comment, but that's fine. Thank okay. You. All the person, Robbie? This matter has already been taken up um, with David Beeble and there will be two um, signs that will be installed that will be flashing, and we've already discussed with Attorney Chuck Adams the next steps after this. 
Okay, well, it's still going to go to the committee, and it'll have to come back and be referred, but it's good to hear that that's been addressed early. Um, next, under resolutions, items 5.1 and 5.2 will be referred to various committees. Under reports of committees, item 6.1 is an RC by law and licensing to whom was referred general ordinance number 24 of 1617 by Alderperson Bellinger repealing and recreating article 4 of chapter 30 in the municipal code relating to the sales of drugs paraphernalia and repealing and recreating section 70-8 of the municipal code entitled adoption of state law regarding controlled substances and recommends that the ordinance be passed. Alderperson Holshu. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the report of committee be accepted and adopted. Second. We have a motion and a second under discussion. Um, we had a meeting and, and had a number of people that came <clears throat> and chatted. And one of the purposes um, they had asked, why do we do this? One of the purposes was that on um, not our last Please meeting. Hold your mic up. Not mic. our last meeting, but the two previous meetings, we had had a fellow coming in to get a um, uh, bartender's license and he had exhibited <clears throat> some major concerns of there being <coughs> some drug paraphernalia in the different convenience stores so trying to understand that whole mythology and why that was all happening um, this transpired according to our city attorney this ordinance that we are creating does no more or no less than our state statute already s says. So if we didn't pass it, the same laws would be in, in place at this time. We're just trying to get all the different areas, seems to be all over the board, in one place, in one ordinance. I'm assured that our statute that we're going to be um, hopefully adopting this evening mirrors the state statute, and I can um, refer to um, city attorney to validate that. But um, our whole committee agreed that we should be passing this, and I'm hoping that we have the support of everyone here. Thank you. Thank you for those comments. I'll turn to the uh, city attorney, um, if you can validate that sure. for the group. Yeah, I, I reviewed the ordinance. I didn't draft this particular ordinance. It did come from uh, Lego, Wisconsin municipalities, a number of other municipalities. But as I reviewed it, I believe that it is, in essence, um, adopting the state statute as we already do, that there are no changes. Um, I do not believe, in fact, we have the authority to make changes to the state law, uh, and I can tell you that uh, our policy as far as prosecuting these things will not <coughs> change as a result of whether you pass or do not pass this tonight. Thank you very much. Next alderman is Alderperson Boring. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, a couple questions. Uh, I don't know if it came up at the committee or not. Uh, have, the, have, this, have these types of devices been a problem in Sheboygan? Uh, have there been a lot of citations issued? And did the uh, police department uh, give their opinion on this proposed ordinance at the meeting? All the person holds you. Thank you. Um, we did have discussion um, regarding the, the different um, pieces of artwork but I can, would like to call upon, um, if I could open the floor to our Chief of Police. Sure, uh, Chief Domagulski, would you like to come forward and, and respond to that question? <coughs> the Chief did attend that last Law and Licensing Committee meeting. Sure, I, I didn't share an opinion at the meeting. I, I don't think it matters. Um, we already adopt the state statute. This is just spelling out what it what it says in the ordinance. <coughs> We're going to enforce it the same way as we have in the past. Um, as the city attorney said, if if we try to enforce it and he doesn't want to prosecute it, it's not going to get prosecuted. Anything else, Alderperson Boring? If I could just follow up, Chief, has have have you uh, had a problem in Sheboygan with this type of uh, product? And have you have have there been any any citations and have they been prosecuted? I would say that we we um, arrest people quite frequently for possession of drug paraphernalia. We haven't had a big problem with it in our shops, um, mostly because of the way that we do things and that we're looking for voluntary compliance um, with drug paraphernalia laws, just like we are for everything else. 
if we get a complaint like we did at the law and licensing meeting about a month ago, we go out and inspect the shops. Um, if there's something in there that, that they shouldn't have in there, we explain to them they shouldn't have in there, give them a chance to comply with the law, and then if they don't, then we enforce it. Thank you. Next, Alderperson Jose. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I'm going to vote against this ordinance for uh, several reasons. Um, but, you know, I, I have a, a fancy pipe that I bought in Mexico. It's, it's not one of the glass ones. I'm actually afraid that if I smoked out of the glass pipe, I might, it might crack or I might drop it or something like that. But I got a nice, uh, I got a nice ceramic pipe I bought uh, in Mexico, in Acapulco, that I used to smoke tobacco. Uh, those, those who are my close friends know that on the Monday nights we don't have counsel. About this time, you'd find me at the Olive and Ash and Kohler either smoking a pipe or smoking a cigar, but smoking things that are very legal to smoke out of a pipe. Um, I don't think that uh, uh, this, is, this ordinance is necessary, and Dr. Watson did mention two reasons that we adopt the local ordinance that's similar to the state ordinance. It can, it can lower the burden on the uh, circuit court uh, by shifting some of the caseload to the administrative court, the municipal court, and uh, it can, of course, raise revenues for the city by the city collecting those fines instead of the, the county or the state collecting fines that go through the circuit court. But uh, I have to, the, uh, uh, Mr. Schaefer, I have to agree with him. Uh, they're not the same. The city attorney says, but I can, I can read. And what's, what's proposed in the ordinance is not the same as what's in the state statute. There have been additional words added. And it's, if, this, if the purpose is truly to mirror the state statute, um, then that's what should be done. So I'm in favor of voting this ordinance down tonight, and if uh, Alderman Belger or someone else wants to, uh, if it truly the purpose is to uh, mirror the state statute, if they want to resubmit an ordinance that exactly mirrors the state statute, I would support that ordinance, uh, relying on the promise of the chief of police that there's not going to be some new kind of enforcement uh, against these businessmen that, have, that are selling the products legitimately and making a portion, at least a portion of their livelihood on it. Thank you for those comments. Alderperson Holshu. Thank you, Mayor. Mayor. Well, with that being said, and with there being questioned whether or not our ordinance is word by word verbiage to the state, I'm wondering if it is at all possible I can refer this back to committee to make certain that this ordinance is a mirror image of the state statute and for the purpose that it's intended to encapsulate and close in all the pieces. You certainly can make that motion. I would second. like to make that motion to send it back to committee. Second. We have a motion and a second to refer this back to the Law and Licensing Committee. Is there any discussion on that motion? <coughs> Alderperson Wolf, did you have one? No. No, okay. Um, seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Opposed? Motion passes. This will be referred back to the Law and Licensing Committee. Next is item 6.2, which is an RC by the Finance Committee, who has referred resolution number 119 of 1617 by Alderman Wolf, establishing a debt management policy to maintain the city's outstanding general obligation debt at 60% of the city's debt limit and recommends that the resolution be passed. <coughs> Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to accept and adopt and pass resolution. Thank you for that motion. Second. And the support. Uh, that's before you now for discussion. Seeing no discussion, will the clerk please call the roll? Thirteen eyes and two noes. Motion passes. Item 6.3 is an RC by finance to whom was referred resolution number 118 of 1617 by Alderman Wolf amending the capital improvement program for the program period of 2017 through 2021 and adopting the program for implementation and recommends that the resolution be passed along with the amendment to the capital improvements program. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. 
Make a motion to accept and adopt and pass resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Uh, Alderperson Bellinger. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I'm going to oppose this. I think, uh, again, as I stated previously, that this is um, both irresponsible and reckless, uh, this level of borrowing. If you look at the document, the document says that we're going to, originally we were going to borrow $6.3 million, um, and now we are looking at borrowing $5 million. <coughs> but if you, if you look further in the, in the uh, included documents, it's got, in the spreadsheet, it's got $9 million. So it's got the, the, five, or the $4 million added for City Hall onto the general obligation, the, the borrowing for that. So, if you were to take the, uh, just the $5 million borrowing, that's a 66% increase over what we're used to spending um, annually. And if you take the $9 million, that's a 200% increase over what we're used to spending. And if you look at the five-year plan, the five-year capital plan, um, it's got some kind of staggering figures here. It looks like uh, the five-year capital plan has $31 million worth of borrowing in the next five years. Um, under uh, the last five years, the previous five years, we had a city administrator in, in Jim Modio and uh, president of the council, Don Hammond, who kind of led us down a direction in a, uh, a fiscally responsible manner to re get our debt down from $67 million down to 33 or $34 million where it's at today. Taking and adopting this plan is going to bring us right back into the $60 million um, you know, high 50s, you know, low $60 million debt that, that we just are trying to recover from. So that's why I'm against it. I think it's, again, reckless and irresponsible, and I would encourage my fellow aldermen um, to support me in um, not passing this. Thank you. Thank you for those comments. Alderperson Donahue. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I, um, if appropriate, I think um, if the city administrator could respond to uh, some of those allegations. City Administrator. Uh, th thank you. The, the five-year capital improvement plan uh, before you does, uh, as uh, Alder Bellinger identified, uh, does increase uh, annually uh, the amount of uh, general obligation debt to be issued. Uh, on the floor of the Common Council uh, approximately, I think a month ago, there was a compromise uh, identified by Alder Thiel uh, to cap it at uh, $5 million uh, from the 6.3 that previously was recommended by finance. Um, the amount uh, correctly as Alder Bellinger identified, uh, the document before you does identify an additional $4 million for half the cost associated with uh, a new city hall in 17 and another $4 million in 18. If you subtract out that $8 million, uh, the average amount uh, over the five years uh, is, rough, is roughly 4.7, so it does stay under the $5 million that was discussed here uh, a month ago. Uh, the, uh, the city does have uh, a low level of uh, current general obligation debt. Um, even better, the, uh, the repayment period in most of the debt is uh, roughly 10 years or less, so the repayment period is very aggressive. Um, because of that aggressiveness, even though the city is issuing new debt, a lot of debt is being paid off. So the result is uh, a lower net cost uh, at the end of the five years. So even though roughly 31 million of new debt is identified, uh, at, the, at that same period of time, the actual amount of debt uh, is not gonna be as high as, as uh, Alder Bellinger identified that the city at one point was up to, six point, uh, was up to uh, 67 million. Uh, the, the borrowing again represents uh, funding uh, many projects that were recommended by each of the committee commissions or boards. Uh, again, they've been consolidated into this five-year cap improvement. It was also supported by the finance committee. Thank you very much. Is there any other discussion? Alder Person Donahue? Um, I just, <clears throat> I, I'm gonna support this uh, for a variety of reasons, and I've, I've spoken on this a number of times um, on the floor. Um, I, I guess I'm, I'm, I'm needing to challenge the perspective that what we are doing is reckless. Um, I do think that we can disagree about the amount of money that the city should borrow uh, in order to keep its house in order. 
but I don't think that there's anything about, that this, about this that is reckless. So I understand that there is a, a $4 million charge for City Hall in this coming year's budget, another $4 million. We could subtract all of that, and we can just continue to let City Hall disintegrate like we have year after year after year because we're not willing to take the responsibility and sometimes the political heat for making improvements. We need to make improvements as we go along. I looked at the, you know, what's been pushed off into 2018 and 2019 and 2020, and I understand why we're doing that, but we need to understand that it's gonna cost more when we finally get around to it. Interest rates are at historic lows, and for us not to be taking advantage of that and to be putting off needed repairs until another time and another time, and I suppose some of us are thinking maybe another council and I won't have to be responsible for voting for that. I just don't think that we should do that. So I, I, do, I understand that people can certainly degree, disagree about debt levels. I'm just, it, this is not reckless and irresponsible. It really isn't. In fact, I think it's really quite the opposite. Thank you for those comments. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I hate to beat the drum of, you know, pretty much the same subject that we've been talking about for, for many, many months. I'm tired of hearing about the reckless and res irresponsible because I think as good stewards, um, the alderpersons here and in the past have done a great job trying to watch money, trying to watch our budgets, and we do try to keep the house fiscally sound. Um, but I also want to point out, if, if anybody hasn't realized it, that um, in several of our meetings, uh, capital improvements, it was defined that we had a $3 million cap. And with cost of living um, since 1997, we should be spending $5 million. So it's been since 1997, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, that we have been not spending what we should be to keep the city and keep our infrastructure um, from deteriorating. So when we talk about roads and we drive around and wonder what's rattling and it's our teeth, and when we drive around and we look at buildings that the city owns that are falling apart, and we wonder why the finance department has buckets collecting water from the rain, <coughs> we can say that we're being fiscally sound or we can say we're being reckless because we're not taking care of things. So I'm going to be voting for this. This is a plan, it's a budget. It doesn't mean that it's not gonna change next year or the year after, but like Alderperson Donahue said, money is cheap right now, and it would be fiscally irresponsible to not borrow when the, when the interest rate is good. We have a good bond rating. We have a good um, bond issue going on with our, with our AA2, and we have a lot of things to fix in the city of Sheboygan to be fiscally sound. That's all. Thank you for those comments. Alderperson Bellinger. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I'd just like to correct something that uh, um, Alderman Wolf just um, spoke to, and that is if you index for inflation, uh, we should not be borrowing $5 million. I think it was stated at the Finance Committee meeting that if you take into account that ordinance and you index for inflation, it should be $4.5 million. So we're in excess of what we should be borrowing if you use that logic. And, uh, and my other point is, is that we also have $18 million in the general fund that is unassigned and can be used to pay for part of City Hall or all of City Hall. We've got money. We haven't turned it back to the taxpayers. Um, it, you know, we, we've been good stewards of in the past, but now we're looking at, you know, in five years, doubling our, our debt. Normally, we borrow $3 million a year. Five years, that's $15 million. Under this plan, we're going over, you know, over, you know, double that, $31 million. So I do think it's reckless and irresponsible, and I do think there's other ways to pay for things within the city using uh, the unassigned, um, fund balances that we have you know, already existing. Thank you for those comments. Alderperson Jose. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm gonna join uh, Alderman Bellinger in voting against this. Uh, I think a wonderful thing happened 
after Governor Walker came on the scene and passed Act 10, I'm sure a lot of uh, <coughs> city officials and uh, city administrators, a lot of politicians at different levels of the government all over the state don't like Act 10 because it forced, forced municipalities to tighten their belts. It forced, uh, it forced many of us to find different ways to create fees or um, because we can't raise taxes as much as we'd want to. But I think it's a fantastic thing. And uh, I think a lot of the, uh, a lot of the uh, politicians who are spendthrifts, they think there's a magic money tree and, and the, at the root of it is the American taxpayer. And we can, just, we can just leach more and leach more every year, leach more off of the American taxpayer. And quite frankly, with the economy, which has not recovered in the last eight years, uh, the, people, the pe people have not got the money to, to spend more um, for, for pet projects and things like that. Uh, I, know what, I know what the spend, spendthrift people think is they're hoping that they're hoping the next election there's going to come along another governor and they're going to reverse Act 10, and those restraints are uh, going to come off. But I hope they don't. I hope those restraints stay in place, and we're forced to continue tightening our belts. And um, I have to agree, it, the, we, it's a colossal increase in spending. Um, if we got some money in the funds, we should go there first. And uh, I'm going to vote against the, this budget. Thank you for those comments. Alderperson Donahue. Um, I need to disagree on a, a variety of levels. Um, first of all, uh, <clears throat> here uh, in the city of Sheboygan, we are not spendthrift politicians. I will note for the record, and we can say this over and over again, basically the tax levy rate in this city has not increased since 2005. In other words, most of our taxpayers are paying the same levy rate that they paid in 2005 there are very few entities where you can go and say, gee, my cost of living hasn't gone up. Two, we are not increasing the tax levy in any way whatsoever because of this proposed capital improvements budget. We really need to get that into our heads. Now, maybe there are spendthrift politicians in, in uh, Madison. Um, it depends on your definition of spendthrift. You know what the real spendthrift thing, and we went through this in a previous administration, is when you start talking about rating reserve funds. Alder Bellinger would have difficulty with that, I believe, because that is a key piece of our AA bond rating. We have very healthy reserves. Now, this is not to say that those reserves should never be looked at in, for purposes of for City Hall, for example, we may want to we may want to responsibly withdraw some money from the reserves in order to reduce our borrowing for City Hall. But if we start going down the road of saying, let's just empty out our savings account, we are not being fiscally responsible. We're being spendthrifts. It's like if we were at home and saying, you know, let's just empty <coughs> out our savings account and, and, and instead of, you know, doing this or doing that, and we can't do that. So I, <laughs> so I, I reject the, the label of reckless, and I'm also rejecting the label of, oops, of losing my earring, um, and I am rejecting the label of, of spendthrift. Not true, not true, not true. So I think, I think we just need to get this done. Um, it's, it's reasonable, I think we can go forward with it. I just, I think it's the responsible thing to do. Thank you for those additional comments. Alderperson Jose. Well, the, the, the uh, Alderperson uh, Donahue's comments are a little bit disingenuous because it's a little bit of the shell game. They're going to tell the taxpayers, we're not increasing the levy, so per dollar you're not going to pay any more in taxes. But everybody knows that if you borrow money, eventually the mortgage has to be paid. So you, the 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 debt being put upon the taxpayers is going to either have to be paid by those that are paying taxes now or their children or their grandchildren. So it's the, if, you're sp if you're spending money, more money, you're spending more money. And to say that it, uh, it's, 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 there's not a magic money tree, this money that's borrowed someday has to be paid back. And to say that you're, uh, that you're not increasing the tax rate, it's, it makes it look like, oh, good, we're not going to spend anything. We're not increasing you, the taxpayer's burden. But... 
you're, pu you're pushing it down the road, and everybody knows it's, 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 it's the spinning shell game. Thank you for those comments. Seeing no other lights, the clerk please call the roll for passage. We're on 6.3, correct? Yes. Thank you. Rosemary. Rosemary. Okay, thank you. Yes. Eight eyes, seven no's. Motion passes. Item 6.4 is an RC by finance to whom was referred resolution number 117 of 1617 by Alder Person Wolf establishing the 2017 budget appropriations and the 2016 tax levy for use in the calendar year uh, and recommends approving the resolution with the attached amended 2017 budget uh, summary. Alder Person Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to accept and adopt. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Under yeah, discussion? Pass. Alder Person Boren. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I've, got a, I've got some problems with the, uh, with the budget and the ones, the two that I talked about at uh, the Finance Committee meeting where were the, uh, the collections for the municipal court, which are being, I believe, budgeted about $80,000 less. And my understanding is that's because there are less citations and possibly a difference in uh, philosophy in uh, the judge that we have now compared to the last judge. Uh, for those of you, uh, I've been around a long time and I was here when we, before we had the municipal court and before we had the municipal court, the city of Sheboygan received approximately $425,000 a year from the county for doing nothing. I understand the, uh, the advantages to having a municipal court on cutting back on police overtime, having to sit over at the, at the county court and expediting some of our municipal citations, but we're, we're downgrading those collections. And, and as I said, at one time we were getting $425,000 for doing nothing. And now we have this bureaucracy of a municipal court where our collections are not even coming close to what we used to get from the county for doing nothing. And I understand the citations, the municipal citations would be on the bottom of the pile over there at, at the uh, circuit court. Uh, we do still get some dollars for the county, from the county on some of these citations that are not adjudicated at the municipal court and they end up over at the circuit court. My other concern is that the ambulance collections for next year are being reduced from the original budget by about $225,000. Uh, the ambulance service is, uh, I believe, grossing about uh, uh, three, point, uh, three million dollars a year in calls, and the collections are being downgraded next year to $1.2 million, a reduction of, uh, of $225,000. It's kind of ironic that the uh, that in the budget uh, that the, the three new firefighter paramedics that are proposed to be hired, those come in at about $75,000 a person per firefighter paramedic or around $225,000. The chief also wants a new battalion chief and I would imagine that person is going to come in at around $95,000 all in with salary and benefits. You know, had not, had not the municipal court collections been downgraded or the, uh, or the ambulance service uh, collections being downgraded, that would have probably been enough to, to uh, cover the salaries and benefits of those three people. But as a result of those collection downgrades, that money, uh, the 225 for the three new firefighters and the new battalion chief are gonna have to come out of, out of, out of general fund revenues. And that money could have been used for something else. So th those, are, those are my biggest beasts of, of, of this budget. And, 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 and I guess we have to ask ourselves the question, and I understand the revenue, the revenue that, that we are getting from the ambulance service is helpful. We've been waiting for 18 months 
for this fire chief and his administration to come through with a plan that was ordered by our, our, our former city administrator. And it seems like waiting us out and waiting for the new city administrator, he's getting everything he asked for and more. And uh, I guess the, bucks, the buck has to stop somewhere uh, on, the, on these revenue producing things that the city has in municipal court and the, uh, and the ambulance service. And don't get me wrong, we're providing an excellent ambulance service. That's never been the question. It's always been the finances. And I think it's time for our fire chief and his management team to step up to the plate and give us a plan, a, a, a long-term plan for the fire department that we requested 18 months ago. We got a very good product out of the union, and I appreciate that, but that's only one side of the story. When are we gonna get this plan that we asked for 18 months ago from the fire chief and his administration? It's about time. Thank you. Thank you for those comments. Alderperson Donahue. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, I would suggest that the place to talk about uh, long-term, to consider whether or not municipal court is a good fit for us would be apart from the budget process. Um, I think there are pluses and minuses to municipal court and I think we can look at it in a little more detail. I've wanted to do that for quite a long time just to really examine what the real costs are and what the benefits are and, and so forth. And, and, and I think it's a complicated question. It's a good thing to talk about. But I think for the purposes of our budget today, it, it, it's not a reason to vote against the budget. Um, uh, in terms of uh, ambulance uh, services, I think we just need to realize that fire services are one of the basic services we do provide, and we need to do a good job of it. Whether we make a profit at it or not is certainly a consideration, but it can't be the only <coughs> consideration. Those are just two responses that I would make. And then I just want to say, and I don't know how all of you feel, but I want to just a personal thank you to um, our... our um, uh, 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 Chief Administrator uh, Daryl Hofflin, and of course to Nancy Buss uh, and the people in finance. Um, I've always felt kind of apart from the budget process. You know, we'd get 30 pages and we'd vote yay or nay. So it's been, um, I was just very pleased to get, <laughs> to, to get a three ring binder. But I, I really learned a lot through the whole process and was really able to look deep into things not that we become micromanagers, but we don't become a rubber stamp. And I think that this new process has been very, very helpful. And I know that Daryl and Nancy and, and <coughs> staff worked on it like crazy. And so I, I just want to say I think we're in a really good position in a positive way to move forward um, as to how we do one of the most important things we do, which is look at the budget. Thank you for those comments. Are there any other comments on the budget? Alderperson Bellinger. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I'm disappointed in the budget, um, and I don't want to take away for any of the work that any of the people did in, in the uh, uh, department heads, but um, the overall final product, um, you know, I'm disappointed for some of the same reasons that Alderman Bourne has, has previously mentioned, and uh, in the excessive borrowing binge that we're about to go and undertake for the next five years. So, you know, I, that's why I'm disappointed. I'm also disappointed that um, there hasn't been any additional cost savings brought forth. <laughs> Um, last year, we outsourced the assessor's office and received some significant cost savings, you know, with that due to an early retirement. Um, I, I know that um, the town of Wilson's having issues with their fire department. If we thought about doing a regional fire service, you know, offering that something similar to the North Shore of Milwaukee, where they're saving millions of dollars every year on, on something like that. Um, it, you know, we, we looked in the past at outsourcing garbage and, and doing some different things. I just think there needs to be some additional creative, whether it's shared services, doing something with the county, or um, outsourcing, um, you know, privatizing, you know, things that we're already doing. Um, trying to reduce our costs, I think, is what needs to be looked at, and I don't really see any of that in this budget. So, um, and again, it's not to downgrade any of the people that did all the work on it. Obviously, there was a great deal of time and effort put into it, but I wish there was a, you know, a, a better outcome and we saw some more significant savings than, than what we're seeing. It seems like it's the status quo. Thank you. Any other discussion? Seeing none, would the clerk please call the roll for passage?
Eight ayes, seven noes. Motion passes. Under ordinances, items 7.1 through 7.3 will be referred to the Public Protection and Safety Committee. Under matters laid over, 8.1 is an RO number 125 of 1617 by the City Planning Commission to whom was referred general ordinance number 19 of 1617 by Alder Mendrone uh, and Robbie and uh, RO number 113 of 1617 by the City Clerk for the vacation of a portion of the paved alley between Sibley Court on the north, Salmon Avenue on the south, Calumet Drive on the east, and Wyman Avenue on the west and recommends that the ordinance be passed. Alder Person Bellinger. Thank you, Mayor. I move to accept and file and pass the ordinance. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing no discussion, would the clerk please call the roll? Fifteen eyes. Motion passes. Next, we'll go on to other matters. City Attorney Adams. Nine point one is an RO by the Fire Chief submitting a quarterly report for the period commencing July 1, 2016, ending September 30, 2016. That'll be referred to Public Protection and Safety. Nine point two is an RO by the City Clerk submitting a communication from Jared Riemann, a probation and parole agent on behalf of inmate. Christopher Riley requesting a waiver to the sex offender residency restrictions. That'll be referred to public protection and safety. 9.3 is a resolution by Alderperson Donahue authorizing the creation of a Sheboygan area room tax commission and tourism zone among the city of Sheboygan, town of Sheboygan, and town of Wilson. That'll be referred to the finance committee. 9.4 is uh, an RO by the city clerk submitting a communication from the Sheboygan area school district submitting the approved tax levy for the 2016-2017 school year. That will lie over. 9.5 is an ordinance by Alderperson Donahue repealing and recreating Article 2 of Chapter 114 of the Municipal Code relating to rooms or lodgings. That will be referred to the Finance Committee. 9.6 is an RO by the City Clerk submitting a claim from Wilson Mutual Insurance Company on behalf of their insured LCNR LLC for alleged damages to their property due to sewer backup. That will be referred to the Finance Committee. 9.7 is an RO by the City Clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending December 31, 2016, December 31, 2017, June 30, 2017, and June 30, 2018. That will be referred to the Law and Licensing Committee. We're going to take a short recess. Chuck's got to look something up. Okay, item number 10 is a contemplated co closed session. Alder Person Donahue. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I uh, move. Uh uh, under the uh, move to convene in closed session under the exemption provided in section 1981 sub 1 sub e of the Wisconsin statutes where competitive and bargaining reasons require a closed session related to the redevelopment opportunities for the Founders Club LLC and a development opportunity in the 600 block of North 8th Street. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Would the clerk please call the roll for closed session. Fourteen eyes, one no. 
Motion passes. Again, we'll take a short recess while we clear the chambers and reconvene in just a few minutes.